Earth may be dying. Some are looking off-world for a fresh start. The competition for land and resources out here is brutal. In this winner-take-all environment, people are doing anything to succeed. You need to stake your claim, earn your place, and do your best to save humankind's future. Hello, Nana here. Welcome to the Off-World Trading Company. This is version 1.0, the launch version, which actually broke the save game from a beta 10. So the let's play we had partially in progress. We actually cannot resume the campaign. So we're going to start anew. And things actually look shinier and better now. So this is going to be just a an even better playthrough. Also, I learned a bit, so that's also going to be pretty good. So, choose your CEO. Macy Song with some starting perks. We have a robot, which has a superconductor. Okay, cool. Wind turbines. The nice thing about robots is that they don't need to eat, so you don't really need the, the greenhouses for them, for your own production, of course. Scavengers. Free sabotage. Cool. Just uh, some other things. And we have scientific, and there's actually ooh, some locked personas. So they start with a patent lab and solar power. So interestingly, nobody actually starts with uh, geothermals. The extra claim for uh, the expensive is pretty cool. So let's change settings, difficulty. Yeah, let's do assistance. That's what I played on last time, and that was interestingly it was, it was uh, interesting enough. Better prices, change the speed, Iron Man, the random daily seats. Real maps. Okay. That's nothing exactly terribly interesting. So let's get uh, let's get started. Welcome to your first campaign game. Yes, it's uh, I completely forgot the all the efforts of beta 10. In the campaign you will be competing over territories with seven other CEOs. You will battle for businesses in the territories where new colonies are being founded. There are a few different rules when playing in a campaign, and this being your first time trying it out, we are going to highlight some of the most important ones. You have a few options each round where to expand your business. The choices matter and each location has unique rules as well as a bonus for winning. As you can see, there's also a lot more going on on the screen. Take a look at the options and make your choice. After you've selected the location to launch your next business in, click to hire the staff button. Will do. Okay, so the map is now way shinier. You can actually you know, see nicely where things are. Pick the different areas. Or cool. ah, you actually see who is subsidizing it. No bonus. Let's see, EU government colony. Starts with laboratory modules. No office modules allowed. Austerity first. Level two, financial reforms. Got an extra core sample. Then mule and core sample. And then mule adrenaline boost and core sample. Assuming that if it gets upgraded, this is completely new in the launch version. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see, in USA, trickle down, bailout, stimulus package, the top 1%, you get an extra claim at different levels. Okay. Let's see, EU, we already saw, Russia, the means of production. Labor becomes cheaper, okay. 
and China reform and opening, you get plus one to scan range. Okay, well, we'll see what this will boil down to, I suppose. Okay, so in the choice, there's no Chinese colony for the first three missions. We just have to uh, pick and choose. Well, me being European, I'll just have to go with this one. That's. Uh, just have to do that. Let's see. So this is going to be medium with riverbeds. There's no ice. And uh, there are rare resources. Or resources are rare. And as a reward, we get core samples. Cool. So which means you can dig for extra resources, which can be very, very useful. Uh, so, uh, just uh, a bunch of black market operations are available. I think this is randomized. Um, they, they picked them out of a pool, so it's going to be different every game, and there's just uh, different people. So, hire staff. So, it's also they, they seem to have split up the, the process of getting started, because it used to be like five or six pages of, of text before you even got to click your first button, and then there was one screen with everything. Now they seem to have set it up in multiple stages, so it's less overwhelming, which I think is a pretty good, pretty good change. So, structures and staffing. In the campaign, you must spend time and money to improve the effectiveness of the production buildings. They have a much slower production rate than you may expect. So these upgrades are critical. Certain structures even need to be unlocked. For example, geothermal power plants, which are very excellent. Below your name, you will see all the structures and CO bonuses you start with. The numbers next to the structures represent the number of employees supporting those structures. I already have a lot of cool stuff. You can always improve your production output by hiring engineers. Contracts can be signed for a single round bonuses. Employees can be hired for permanent bonuses. Advanced building require engineers as well. But instead of enhancing the output speed, they support more advanced structures to be constructed. Finally, there are specialists and upgrades which provide some very cool options you should consider taking advantage of. So let's make some decisions. Okay, so this, uh, are, these are the starting prices for all the goods that can be produced in the game. So electronics being the holy grail. But if everybody starts producing it, then of course it's not going to be very profitable. Okay, so what you select, let's see, geothermals. Ah, you can only get them on, uh, on the contract, not permanently. So by default. Water bombs, metal mines, elemental quarries, and solar condensers. Life support, greenhouses, and electrolysis. Steel, chemical, glass. Okay, and power wise, we only have solar. You want geothermal. Because it's just the most reliable power source. But if we can't have geothermal, then we might as well get ourselves a wind turbine engineer so at least we can uh, get consistent power because there's nothing worse than having the power market being completely uh, ramping up price wise and needing to buy power during the night time okay we have 100k left so you can only make one purchase every round but you could say we'll uh, get a contract to actually boost the efficiency so 0 0.55 and if we get it on ah, of course the ah, i can actually make a choice okay so you can only get one so we could or we can just uh hang on to our money. That's probably a better one. Right, so we're gonna go with this. We uh, bought ourselves, or hired ourselves a permanent staff member. There's no subsidy level, launch the business. We'll see how it goes. Showtime, you've decided which region to launch your business in and have hired the right people to make your business a success. Things are looking good. You now have a chance to scope out the competition and make sure you are ready. You can always go back and tweak your choices if you want to. 
So this is also pretty overwhelming, so let's, let's have a look what's everybody doing. Everybody's in a similar state. So I got myself a wind turbine engineer. Most of the other ones already started with it. The, the robots also only have electric. Nobody has geothermals yet, but that's pretty hard to get. They actually went for an off-world market. Oh, wow. So they can export materials while nobody else can. We are all stuck with the same economy while they can actually export materials back to Earth. So it's going to be interesting. Reclamation Industries. Se seizing opportunities and then it was already done unloading. Excellent. So first things first. Now it's your time to shine. You can see an unscanned map and a burgeoning colony of Naktong Valas before you. You will need to scan the map, found your company and get some production up and running. Before you get too far ahead of yourself, there are a few things you will need to learn if you plan on making a go of it. The first thing is you only have one week of time to build your business and make your money. That's just seven days to work with. No problem, I was born ready. If you've done a lot of business on Mars, you may be familiar with buying out the competition. Your only investment options at the moment are to buy stocks in the, co in the colony. Initial stock purchases of the colony provide construction modules that can grow the colony's population capabilities as well as their workplace opportunities. So why should I do that? Ultimately, the business that owns the most of the colony's stock is the business that reaps the largest harvest. The biggest investor in Naktong Valles will receive the core sample times two. Not only that, but based on the ownership percentage, each business will receive weekly dividends and profits of the colony. Your goals are to make sure your company has a high value and that you are the majority owner of the colony's stock. I can do that. So everybody start out with a single stock and that is probably where all the things come from. So, welcome to Mars. If you've watched the previous four episodes, this is going to look slightly different. If this is the first episode you see, welcome. We'll uh, get into it. So, click to scan it. Auto post. And I guess that's for the campaign. They do that. In Skirmish, you get a question whether you want it or not, because in multiplayer, the auto pausing actually doesn't happen. So, the idea is that as you start unraveling what's on the map, on the left side, you see all the things that are uh, that have been scouted already. And as your competitors discover, like, yeah, you know, this is a good place to, uh, to crash down. They'll go for it. And also after they uh, set up their colonies, things will actually start to automatically unravel themselves. But this is just a, a very decent way to just uh, get a good overview. Uh, final bit. Uh, so the map is now Mostly revealed. But it's completely revealed now. I'm the last one to settle. So we can see well geothermals we can't do anything with it. So let's say that our focus is going to be to set up Wait, there was something about this that certain colonies... Okay, this was going to be a workplace colony, wasn't it? So, they consume chemicals. So, we know, building up the colony is actually going to drive up the demand for chemicals. And as a result, the price is going to go up. So, we're going to have a chemicals-based strategy. And if I remember correctly, chemicals uses carbon and fuel. Fuel uh, you can get by turning water into oxygen and fuel. So we want to be near water and near carbon. And of course we want a lot of electricity. So there's a bunch of carbon here, but these are only low deposits. Is there actually... 
are the good deposits of carbon. Actually, there's one. It's over there. So if we want that, and then some water from there, and some water from there. So if we set up here, we might actually get a decent colony. So let's go for it. So, uh, okay, so this is the same guy uh, pop up I got when I was playing skirmish. Uh, but do you want other pausing? So, if you are building and deciding, it can automatically pause the game so the game t uh, time doesn't advance. So, you have all the time in the world to just look for a good spot. In multiplayer, of course, and in daily challenges, this is not, uh, not, not allowed. But if you're playing by yourself, this is a could be a game enhancing feature because it just gives you more time to think and well actually oh just talking through things it might be useful so for now i'm actually gonna leave it on and see how it works out so we want to set up a pretty decent spot with some power let's see if it's, uh, 0 0.5 0 0.5 it's not gonna get better than 0 0.5 i think not here so you get an adjacency bonus, so we actually would want to have as many close together as we can, as preferably in some kind of triangle setup. So this is probably going to be a pretty good spot. And we can get the first one here, and then build out a triangle for ourselves. Okay, next up, water. Claim this one. After that, greenhouse, because we need to feed our people. Uh, fuel because well it, it makes both fuel and oxygen people need oxygen to breathe and the, the transportation ships need fuel to fly and then finally we're gonna get ourselves some carbon and then we have used up all our, of our claims for a level one headquarters the black market is online. Okay. Scientific colony expanded. Okay. So this way you actually get a bit of a flying start because you're just plopping down five or six different buildings straight from the get-go. And it's just gonna be nice and quick. Also, why do I have three stocks already? So I didn't do anything. Did I? Okay. Scientific colony expanded. Good thing is we're just producing a, a surplus of all of our resources. I can actually say that's just uh, sell the surplus of food. Do control shift. Colony expanded. The minus is now slightly highlighted, but it's not actually. Ah, now it is. So if you hold control and shift and then you click, then it will automatically sell whatever extra you are producing to make yourself some money. Which I think is a, a really nice feature. So we need to get ourselves some more aluminium and steel. So aluminium we need 60 off. Also we can just wait for, to get enough money. 6.7 is what we need. Okay, so the price here is slowly dropping down, but it's still the most expensive product we have. So we might as well go with it and just keep selling it. It's just making decent money. Okay, so the price of aluminium and steel is rising. And as a result, it gets more expensive to actually do this so this is spiking yes now we can upgrade then we just buy instantly on the market what we need and as a result there's going to be a slight price hike but now we have five more claims to continue building so my goal was to uh, make this oh so this is also a new interface we can buy an optimization center which is gonna give us better output for our, uh, our goods Let's make a bit. I, I just I just can't resist buying things when they get offered. It's 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 almost like a chronic thing. Yes. So now we spent twenty thousand in debt, twenty 
to get ourselves an optimization center. And with that... Uh, ah, now we can build it actually. So that was just the right, it wasn't even an actual one. Previously in a skirmish, actually... Just got myself the bot one that was next to the colony. Alright, so as a result of leveling up, we're now using a bit more water than before. So I probably want to build another one. So we can build an adjacent one. That's going to boost the, the output of this one by 50%. So that's going to be pretty good. And this one is also going to produce a lot. So alternatively, we can put one down here as well. But for now, let's go with the bonus. So our water production is going to go up. We have some reserves still, so we're, we're still in good shape. Um, because food is uh, price is actually going to go up, we'll might as well just build another farm. And I want to have a chemical factory going. And indeed, it uses some power, which we'll produce another one of. Uh, so it uses power, it uses fuel, which we are now also lacking. Carbon, and it produces uh, chemicals. So if we set up the chemicals over here to just make it, then after that we'll make an electrolysis reactor to just get ourselves a bit more fuel. And then I think we will be in uh, pretty good shape because then we're out of claims again and we'll have to save up money for the next upgrade. So, adjacency bonus, go. And then we will slowly start spewing out chemicals. So the next upgrade we probably want to save up for an optimization center. And then we can tune our production to just make more of whatever we need. Let us be a lesson to you all. Screw with us, and we screw with you. Scientific colonies. Someone sabotaged something. Ah, that someone tried to sabotage. Tricking a power surge, but they got caught because they got a uh, a goon squad set up. Okay, so we are actually the last one to upgrade to a level three, for which we actually require quite a bit of money. Let's disable the auto cell for now. It was actually going pretty darn well, the auto cell. Extra claim. That's a bit, as I said, it's, it's almost chronic. We are producing too much of this, so let's put an auto cell on it. We can actually use the claim. Also, because then we can build our optimization center. Let's build it here. So we can increase the output of this one. So I don't think my auto cell stuck. Yes, it does. See, there's a. Yeah, see, this is now going down again. Hmm. I think the idea of the outer cell is that it will try to not disturb the market price too much. Because if you sell it in bulk, that's exactly what happens. So, optimization center. We can now optimize things. So, we can say generate more output. So, the chemicals that we are building, we can uh, request the production of an upgrade. And the interesting bit is that we actually need chemicals to produce this. So if we invest in the in the production of chemicals, we can upgrade a quicker. Same for patent lab, same deal. So there's a power surplus, so the prices are going down. We're not actually producing too much extra, so I suppose that's a, a good thing.
And we cannot acquire patents because we don't have a patent lab, which is annoying because there's actually some nice patents out there. Okay, just gonna sell some excess resources just to get ourselves some money. We've got plenty of water. Sell some of that. This is out of selling right now. Prices are heading down, so can actually stop the outer selling. Uh, okay, so that's 40%, 50%. I wonder if it's just going to be 60, 70. So, 40%, 50%, 75%, and then maybe 100% on the last one. Build another tile, I think. Oh wait, I can't actually build pleasure domes. That in skirmish, that's not an issue. In here, it actually is. Okay, that's slightly problematic. I can, I can bet make something here, but it's gonna ferry up and down. Could probably get a, a wind lab there. It's gonna generate some power, but I already bought the, the plot, so might as well. Ah, that's a bit of a waste. So, that uh, was some inefficiency over there. So, let's do an upgrade. So, we are level 3 now, just as everybody else. Okay, we did not break our demands. Let's actually give ourselves a production bonus here. So, everything is going to be boosted. Scientific colony expanded. And let's uh, start making some more chemicals. The price is still uh, heading in a decent direction, so we can support another one. It's gonna drain 0.25 fuel, which we have, and it's gonna drain carbon, which we have. And we are building uh, power supplies, so that's also good. Okay, output's been increased, that's good. Let's see, ah, we need more chemicals to boost the production of chemicals. There's a bit of a cycle there. Also, this is rising in price pretty well. Let's uh, put an outer cell on this. Scientific colony expanded. Price here is going down. Let's actually not dump too much. We're producing quite a bit over here, which is good. Because it's going to make the upgrades free because we already have the stocks. And then after this one is done, we can probably do another boost. Also, we're at day 5 out of 7. Let's invest some more in the local market here. So, let's see. A workplace module employs colonists. Colony needs at least as many habitats as workplaces for each one to function. So we buy one of these and then we buy one of these. And then now we have five shares. And suddenly everybody starts buying them, of course. It's gonna be an auction in five seconds. Of what? I don't know yet. A futile. Is that an optimization center? Then we can optimize two things at the same time. I'll bid to 1,000. Oh, that's going to be 14,000 actually. Upside. I'll have two, so we can research two at the same time. We almost have the chemicals. We need 80. Good. Excellent. We can now just research two at the same time. Maybe a bit gratuitous, but it works. This one is uh, rising in price. This one is a bit steady in price. It just gets rid of some excess materials. But I think we can make another one of these. And let's boost both of these. Boom. Right. 
Ah, this is also nice. It just shows you how many of each it needs. Okay, just dumping a lot of materials on the market again. Actually, just completely getting rid of my debt. That means there's not going to be a ticking every time. Because that's kind of a waste of uh, good money. And then we'll be accruing reserves. Right, so, for this, we need fuel. So, if we do some fuel research, and actually, we are. Might as well put some in here because you actually queue them up. So, I think they just alternate. Will they? Yeah, from the looks of it, that's how it actually works. We can just say all the things that we produce. Let's uh, invest in their efficiency. Got 120, we need 40, so wait, one, two, three. And that's most of our chemicals spent. Also, we need to invest more in the colony. Just to get more shares. Okay, now the the battle seems to be on. Extra claim. Let's just bid on that. Let's see. Uh, more food. More fuel. We get an extra claim. Always good. Do appreciate those. Let's see. What's the price of aluminium? Slowly ish going up. I don't think there's a proper source nearby, is there? No, it's pretty hard to get to, so... It's gonna cost 0 0.16 fuel for every... I think it's... Would it be for every... Round trip? Fuel is decently expensive. You know what, let's focus on what we what we do right now. Uh, the upgrades, they are temporary. We only do them every once in a while. Okay, so why are we now suddenly using so much water? Ah, of course, because we're actually using much more water. Is there any sources of water left? Ooh, that's scary. There's not. Do we have core samples? Okay, so we can't get that. Cool, you can actually buy bribe claims. So we need more habitats. We're still in the lead as the most investing player, but our total stock is less than 50%, which is something that you uh, could want to improve. Right, so if we focus on the on this, let's uh, prioritize boosting water a bit. We can actually say, no, this is going to be that's number two. Let's take the food production and this one out. Just go with all of these. And then after that, for now, it's going to be good. We can actually start selling some resources. So, auto sell. So, we now are out of selling two resources, both this one and the food. See, oxygen and fuel. We also have a lot of water right now. We are not. And we have an upgrade. Good, good, good. More claims. Let's go back to our capital so we use even more water. Water being this scarce, I hadn't expected it to become an issue. Prices are rising. 
I might as well go to level 5. Then at least we are done. Then we know we're not gonna get more of these. So let's just settle our debts. So water price is rising. Might as well just buy some. There's really nothing we can do about it. Except for investing heavily in our water production. So the... Uh, the lab there is actually good and i think we just got one level and we're now actually producing a surplus again which is good that means we can start selling our excesses same here so we are now everything we produce we just sell all our excesses which is generating boatloads of money which means we can actually start funding the colony again and it's now costing 41k to add more to it. So we got 12 claims. It's also last day, almost at the end. But oh, we've been more water. But we won! So that's good. A little bit of a uh, confusion in the end because uh, there were some, some, some issues. But we are the greatest shareholder in the colony so we got 12 modules purchased which is pretty good let's see so 17 another 7 is 24 so we own one third of everything and they they revamped the overview ah this was this was actually a very nice view i'm not quite sure if this was in the previous version or not but to now shove it in your face and it's it's very excellent actually so you see my stock price in the end was nine bucks yoji was the number two player but just also nine bucks but slightly less and then seven and five and you can see the biggest money maker so for me that was the chemicals that was what i was focusing for and that strategy paid off handsomely if you scan through the list you see with food i made 176k as well so my second one did pretty darn well and then oxygen did reasonable, fuel did reasonable, and they're all side effects of what I was doing. You also see my biggest money sink, aluminium. But that's because I was not mining it, I was only buying it for upgrades. So, of course, this was a cost sink. Um, biggest money maker for my other competitors. So, this one was in the glass business. This one was in the power business. Which, yeah, I made 40k. This one just made three times as much. Which is uh, not too shabby. And Ilana was in the food business before everybody else. And as a result was larger in it as well. So that's also uh, reasonably fair. Interestingly, they also spent the most on, uh, on glass. So they, it was their biggest money maker. But also the biggest money sink. How was it for us for chemicals? We spent almost $700. And we made $350,000. So I think that was uh, pretty nice. They spent a lot on electronics, probably just buying for upgrades or things. And same here for glass. So I did not use any sabotages. They did use them. I did not target anybody, so I was so friendly. And these two were targeting Ilana, and Ilana was targeting me. Good, good, good. You get the balance sheets. You got some, some production and sales. Let's see, you see also how much I sold via the auto sales. Oh cool, you can actually you know, click on one and then hover over another and then you can compare how they were doing side by side. Structures, black market, optimizations. So I was improving relatively well across the board. I was busy with the last two stages of uh, water efficiency. I have perfect chemical production and the others were dabbling in it. Patents, they were handed out to Ilana and Yoji. Nobody else had access to them, I think. Stock market prices, so in the beginning I, I, I had a slow ramp, then I probably went up a level or something. And again, a curve, and then up in the ramp, and then I just leveled up twice in a row. So leveling up really does boost your stock price by quite a bit. And you see that other players were just going at a slightly less strong curve. Though Yoji actually ended up pretty darn well. 
and the resource prices. Oh, chemicals really was a nice bet. So, let's exit the mission. So, I'm now the majority shareholder. So, I get uh, ooh, a free pleasure dome. That pleases me. We have uh, 32%, so that's going to make us 132k per week. So, for every game after this, for the rest of the campaign, we're going to make quite a bunch of money. And the others will do too, but to a lesser degree. So, really, just getting yourself a lot of shares is going to pay off quite handsomely. And the nice thing is you get 20k for every colonist. So the bigger the pie, the more there is to divide. And in the... Okay, so in the other territories there... But just one versus one. Rather than a four-way fight. So there you had stronger winners. Okay, new expansion opportunities. So the campaign is split into three rounds. Growth rounds. Week one or two. It used to be three, I think, so they shortened that by a bit. So during this round, the Place Corporation helps grow a Martian colony, which then increases the corporation's income between missions. Each mission lasts a specific number of souls. So souls are days. With the winning corporation being the one which acquires the most colony stock. So that's probably just it. Elimination round from weeks three through six. Functions just like the growth round, with the exception that at the end of each mission, the corporation with the lowest stock price and which did not just win a mission is eliminated. Final round, week 7. Once all but four corporations are eliminated, one final mission is played, with all remaining corporations participating. Unlike the previous missions, this final one allows the participating corporations to buy stock directly in each other, with the final winner being the corporation able to buy out the other three. So, magnetic storm or a slowdown strike. One of your workers has a cousin who knows a guy who could get a... And they actually show you what it is, that's also pretty cool. Cool, so you get once off, you get two magnetic storms and then every game afterwards you get a free one. So magnetic storms, I believe they just shut down a, a link of buildings. So this could, could be rather powerful. A slowdown strike just slows down production, I presume. Let's go with magnetic storms. They look pretty. It's pretty easy, simple reason to make a, uh, a choice there. Okay, so... Cool. So before we did a... Uh, mission for the EU so we have to check that one off so we have austerity first whatever that is and then after that we get extra core samples for every round so they start with laboratory modules and no officers allowed so those restrictions still apply Just uh, pick the next mission next episode. Because for now this is going to be it. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy this new and improved launch version of the Offworld Trading Company. And uh, I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching.